The COVID-19 crisis brought to the fore a strange and unprecedented burial process in Kenya. As the pandemic ravaged families across the land, a burial protocol was instituted during the earlier months of the outbreak where burial rites were conducted under extraneous circumstances, denying the dead the dignity they deserve. The burial of James Oyugi at night and in a shallow grave sparked public outcry from Kenyans of all cultural and religious backgrounds. But months later, the family of the late Kenya Ports Authority employee, who was among the first people to pass on from COVID-19, say that they've made peace with the manner in which their kin was buried. And as Mashima Kapombe reports, Oyugi's grave at his homestead in Siaya will forever remain a scar of indignity and a lost chance to properly honor their loved one. Brian Oyugi, third-born son of James Oyugi, shows us his father's tombstone that is yet to be laid on his grave. The events of the night in mid-April when his father was buried unceremoniously are still vivid. His pain is mirrored on his mother's face. On the fateful night, she was at home, ready to lay her husband to rest in the morning. Wakaandika tu majina. Bada ya kuandika majina na wakatoka, wakaenda. Mimi niliingia kwa nyumba nikalala. Ikifika kitu kama saa sita, simu yangu ikalia. Nikaambiwa, tunataka ukuje matibabu uangalie kama hii ni mwili ya buwana yako. Si kujua mwenye simu. Nikamuambia mimi mwanamke siwezi tembea peke yangu. Akaniuliza, hakuna pikipiki upande ukuje na yo matibabu. She switched off her phone upon advice by an in-law. Not long after, a delegation was outside her homestead. Sasa walipo maliza hiyo, wakarudi na hizo magari, wakasumamisha gari inje ya gate. Apo kulikuwa na Land Rover ya polisi, kulikuwa na ile gari kubwa ya polisi na itwa Mariam, kulikuwa na gari saba, nye upe hizi pickups za CIA za county. The rest, they say, is history, but not so for a family whose torment did not end with their kin's indignified send-off. The area chief then asked them to pack a few clothes and board the vehicles. Tuka chukua watoto, tuka chukua na manguo, tuka toka. Lakini tuki toka hapa atu kujua tunaenda siya kufanya nini ama James ameuwawa na nini. Ni kama u... Kichwa kako ni nguma wezi ingia lori, unasukumo, unayenda. Hata ndi yangu alivunjika kwa hiyo lori. Brian escaped. The uncertainty of where his family was being taken to and the manner in which his father was buried troubled him. Hii dunia misi ya wajena mtafifanya kitendo kama hijo. Members of the family were tested for the coronavirus and kept in isolation. They went to court seeking to have his body exhumed, an autopsy carried out, and prayers to be allowed to rebury him in a dignified manner. The court, however, dealt a blow to the family in favor of public interest. The court noted that the public organ responsible for the deceased interment confirmed he had died of COVID-19. The court, however, directed that the family be issued with a death certificate of their kin to undertake alteration proceedings. Mr. Oyugi's death and burial remained painful to his family for some time as they had to deal with stigma from the community. Hata tu mnyama mnyama akitaka kwa hiyo bomba akienda akipita tu njia akienda kwa shamba ya mtu mtu hawezi kusaidia kumshika kufungia mali pazuri anaona tu nkambe pia yataathirika na hiyo ugonjwa. Hii njia iko hapa karibu na sisi. Mtu apiti akienda soko na tukienda center ukifika karibu kwa duka hivi mtu anakuangalia kwanza. Mimi nimekaa bila kwenda nilikuwa natuma watoto. Vile nilienda mara ya kwanza nikaona mtu ananiangalia ajui achukue pesa yangu ajui aongee na mimi. The WHO in September reviewed burial protocols after new findings showed transmission of the coronavirus through dead bodies was unlikely. The family has however chosen to let bygones 
be bygones. Hakuna haji ya kumfufua tena. Na sasa hili ya wacho tuyo mwili yake ya pumzike vila lisha tupo hivo. Lakini uchungu na ilikuwa ni uchungu. Mashirima Kapombe Citizen TV.